One of the purposes of the Native Tree Society is to track the dimensions of our biggest and our tallest trees, whether wherever they are and for whatever species. We're here in a, a, a forest in Massachusetts with the objective of measuring or remeasuring one of our tallest trees, certainly in New England, if not the tallest, and one of the tallest in the entire Northeast. And that would be a white pine, Pinus strobus, a tree that was famous in colonial New England for ship masts, a tree that at one time was the most important, economically speaking, timber tree in the world. Today, the forests are largely second growth, or third growth, whatever regrowth. And the tree that we're measuring is one that falls in that category, although it's not young. It probably is it started growing a little before the beginning of the Civil War. And so now it's quite large, quite tall, and it happens to be in a very good growing location. And so we're going to remeasure it. So how would we go about measuring such a tree? What I have uh, to do the job is some pretty high-tech equipment. First of all, I have a laser technology True Pulse 200X, which is a laser measuring device that incorporates an infrared laser with a tilt sensor that measures angles in the vertical plane. And it all comes out of this one instrument. What I'm going to do with this expensive but very accurate laser measuring device is set it up on a tripod where it will stay still, and I point it in the direction of what I've identified as the top of this particular white pine. And then I fire the laser at that point. I have a crosshairs, and once I put the crosshairs right on that tip, I'll fire the laser. I have shot repeatedly and I've settled on a height above the center of this instrument, and that number is 122.4 feet. After I've shot the top, I swivel the instrument down and shoot at a marker that we have placed on the base of the tree that I can see very clearly. And uh, I will then shoot a laser beam down to that marker that does all the trigonometry for me, and I will get the height below eye level, and I've measured that as 47.2 feet below eye level. So now I've got two numbers to add together. That's not the height of the total tree because I put a marker on the trunk. And we have to measure from the, the, that marker down to mid slope. That'll be the last thing that we do. Okay. What I'm going to do now is complete the job of measuring from the white marker to the mid slope of the base. And I use again the True Pulse 200X to do that. And that's 5.3 feet. So now I have 5.3 feet that I will add to 122.4 plus. 47.2, and that's 174.9. When I was shooting to the white marker, I had a number of separate shots, and I was maybe not quite hitting the same spot at, at all times. So I could easily make an argument that I could average, and that'll give the tree 175 feet on the button. And we can say that it's very close to that, maybe slightly over, maybe slightly under, but uh, good enough for our purpose. This is consistent with the growth rate of the tree and where we have uh, kept up with it over the years. We started measuring this particular tree uh, in uh, 1992, and we were using, at that point in time, a transit. And then later we went to laser rangefinders and clinometers combination. We actually have climbed and tape dropped the tree several times. And now we're using these extremely high precision uh, lasers and tilt sensors to, to come into with, you know, we're the, within about a tenth of a foot. Two tenths of a foot would be about the maximum amount we would be off. <clears throat> 
How would this tree have been measured, let's say, in the past when we didn't have these instruments? Well, we had regular tape measures, cloth tapes or metal tapes, and we had an instrument that we could uh, read that would read an angle in the vertical plane. And we would stretch a tape out, level with the eye so far, and then look up from that point to where we thought the top was and take an angle. And then by simple trigonometry, the uh, length of the tape, level tape to the trunk, times the tangent of that angle would be what we probably claimed the height of the tree was. The problem is, with trees growing in this kind of environment, you have to get really a long way back to see them, so the tape measure uh, method is not very good, not very uh, doable, and if you're too close, then you really don't see the top of the tree. You often see the ends of upturned branches that are actually many feet out in front of the the actual trunk of the tree. So you can greatly over mismeasure the tree's height, or you, you, you could measure, under measure it too, if you were positioned in a different place. But the point being, it was not an accurate way to measure a tree of this size, height, and location. Now we have the instruments to do it. We can say that this tree in New England, as the one we would claim perhaps is the tallest, is 175 feet. So let's go ahead and measure the circumference of this white pine. Basically what we needed to do was establish the mid slope. And in this case, we can just take basically the pith line of the tree, follow it all the way down, and it's going to be right here, which is also half, halfway between the upslope and the downslope side. So after establishing the mid slope, we've gone four and a half feet up the side of the tree. And in this case, we arrive at a circumference at breast height of 7.54 feet. All right, well, we've got a height to the top of 143 feet and 9 inches. And then we have a height to the base of 8 feet and 6 inches. So factoring in where the mid slope of the tree is, that brings us to a total height of 151.6 feet. We've just measured, or my friend Matt Markworth from Ohio has just measured a new 150 foot white pine, one that we had been tracking for some time, and he got 151.6 feet out of it. And we are now going to name the tree for Matt uh, as the 134th white pine in the forest that we have measured to a height of 150 feet or more. Mm -hmm. 